Welcome to the VL, the official unofficial viewers lounge of DCP's Trinity Falls. I'm Victoria. And I'm Jonathan. So how did you feel about this exciting episode? Final eight, uh, which is, I feel like it's like, it went by so quickly, but it, you know, we're getting down to it. So it's, it's nice kind of seeing people's end games kind of like get together. Um, or maybe or, lack of end game. I was literally going to say, or lack thereof, <laughs> um, which was, you know, the kind of like today's episode was about duos, but it was also kind of about, you know, a lot of like kind of a little bit of messy play, a lot of sloppiness. You know, we really exposed people's feelings of either being comfortable or, you know, feeling on the bottom or feeling like they're, they're in a good spot. There was a lot of talk about that rather than a lot of talk about gameplay. Some people were playing too much and some people were not playing at all. So um, we will get all into that today. I have five pages of notes. <laughs> so we're going to try to make this not too long. But um, so we first start off with Lex um, talking about getting out Ben uh, and that and that and why the reasoning why of the last vote. And it was being, you know, it's best for his game. Um, mm -hmm and uh kind of an explanation in regards to that then we see lydia who has uh is talking about making a list and kind of just kind of going through the relationships that she has with everyone and just you know what lydia is noticing and so john and austin are a pair um emily is too similar to lydia in gameplay and positioning um, just things like that. Uh, oh, I guess last episode they had been talking about John, Austin, and Sarah as a trio. Do you have any um, reasons why all of a sudden it's a duo within one episode? Well, I think this is like seeds that were planted that other people who may have left have planted and some people who are here um, are just now growing and they're you're now seeing that kind of, you know, certain, if you just keep putting it out there long enough, it loses its origin story and it just becomes oh, okay. true. Yeah, I'm yeah. just curious why they were thinking of it as a trio last time. And then within one episode, one person's not part of the story anymore. Like Sarah. Yeah, I mean, I think it's uh, for many reasons. I think it's, it's, you know, um, I think it was also pushed as a duo within that trio and the trio is a part of this foursome so I mean it's it always has that and whatever just fits the narrative better gets talked about more and I think with Lydia for instance it's easier to knowing that you're in a duo it's easier to talk about uh, another duo so it's you know I mean it would look more uh enticing to others perhaps if it was like a threesome mm -hmm. or foursome but when you only have eight people left, you can't just target half the tribe. You have to really be like narrow in and say, hey, these people maybe are too close. So I feel like that's what's happening. But it's also seemingly kind of where the narrative has been going. Mm -hmm. um, Lydia also talks about that. Uh, they can't get a read on low. Um, mm -hmm. And that Lydia wants to keep kind of V, obviously. Lex talks about the connection with mm -hmm. Lex and Sarah, who is deemed lesser of a threat. Mm -hmm. um, now, I personally think, you know, there are some people who will get into this with the tier rankings as well at the end, but there are some people who just, like I mentioned earlier, who aren't really playing all that too much, or I'm not even under the radar. They just uh, seem a little fatigued at this point in the game. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, and keeping them around is smart to kind of clock and like keep a list of and, and whatnot. Is there a reason why you would get rid of those people? Because if everyone wants to bring them to the end, like only one person could actually bring two people like that to the end. So just, do you think just you make sure you're them? that person? Yeah, it just makes sure you're that person. Because what's the the opposite of that is what bringing people who are a threat who can beat you? Or is or some people who raise your chance of getting to the end, but make it a bit harder to win. No, I mean, I think you need to bring who you need to bring to the end to get that win and then just figure out how to get there with them. 
if you need to like pivot, pivot. Um, but if you can do that and you see a path to that, then so be it. And we see today some people discussing how they don't see a path to the end necessarily, which is really interesting because today's episode was really this like this self-reflective kind of, you know, spot where people are really kind of deciding like where I'm at, how do I get to the end and where does everyone fit into that? Um, we do also see that's intercut with Emily, um, Emily saying that, uh, just that, that it's, you know, she's finding difficulty finding her way to the end or seeing it and, uh, and having, and picturing that final three, um, and that V and Lydia can win at the end. Um, and so she's not sure who she wants to go to the end with necessarily and how she can, you know, it's not clear cut. Right. Um, so, which is difficult. I mean, I've definitely been in games before where you're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I can do this. You know what I mean? But if that's the case, then your goal is to make it to the end and fight it out. So if you can't figure it out with who you need to just figure out a way to get there, that's your backup, right? Mm -hmm. Um, what do you think of Lydia and keep her keeping her this list? And I think it's a good idea because maybe compared to other people, they might not have even thought of everybody on the tribe and like um, how those people are part of their game. So I think it's always better to think more about it than less. Yeah, where'd you get the time to make this list? Other people like, I don't even think I've written down everyone's names yet or something like it's, it's, it's like, good job. I mean, I like lists, you know, I love lists, having a plan. Um, yeah, I think it's hard to be the type of person that takes notes and somehow act like you don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's going to come across the players and the people who are paying attention and in kind of what you say and how you say it. So you have to be really careful with that, mm -hmm. um, what information you share and what you say at Tribal even, which we will see today. Um, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert, how that kind of bites someone <laughs> in the butt, I think, um, in my opinion. Anyway, we get right into the challenge. The challenge is called, deceptively called, Rolling With My Homies. Um, yeah, and I say deceptively because, and we get no explanation as the challenge either. So we go straight into it. <laughs> and other than the fact that they have to pick pairs. Um, but after that, we were like, no explanation. We go straight into it, which I actually kind of liked because I was like, it wasn't overly complicated. So it was interesting kind of figuring it out and realizing that that title really messed people up a bit because so they have to get into groups of two and their pairings are and it goes in this order emily picks sarah for there's a lot of hesitation with trying to get the ball rolling which i understand but emily picks sarah john asks lydia um with another quote for you i talk to you the least as the reasoning why oh so is that something you would say to me if we were in a similar situation or would that I mean, be too much I would say it to throw off someone if I was trying to like cover a relationship. I wouldn't say it as the truth. Like I, I get it. Like in the spur of the moment, you're like, oh, I haven't really spoken to you yet. Let's team up. But it, it kind of comes across as like, you know, just that. I, I talked to you the least. People would believe that we didn't talk at all. I think people did believe that we didn't really talk. So there's your <laughs> answer. Um, Lo asks Austin which leaves V and Lex as, as a team as well. And then we jump right into it and we quickly figure out that they are not playing because we, you know, we speculated. I'm like, oh, if they're playing with each other, then maybe do they pick, do they face off at the end? Do they pick, you know, uh, who wins individual immunity? I think we both thought that it wasn't going to be dual. It's two dual immunities because it's it's eight people left. Like that's kind of yeah. Crazy. Since we had a challenge where there were two immunities at ten, I just think eight is too late for two immunities. But yeah. I did think that 
there would be a point where you do compete against the partner um but in this case it was just the first stage rather than the second right um do you have any experience with this challenge have you tried it out or played it before yeah i was out in the first round okay so do you want to there's two parts do you want to explain the part one and two then and i'll, I'll i mean i can i mean i don't know if you have it written down who was voted out when but i have it if you don't so do you want to explain yeah, the so challenge? you just have three solo cups against the wall and you're trying to roll ping pong balls into the solo cups and then once you successfully roll it in then you would put the cup upright and so that's the first stage and then the second stage is you put index card barriers um spaced out so you have to aim better yeah so in the first part and again you're against your partner the first part um you we have the winners are and in this sort of low lex emily and lydia so low beats austin lex beats v emily beats out sarah and lydia beats out john Mm -hmm. um and then uh part two like you had mentioned um and there and to get specific it's six inches apart now the cups mm -hmm. and i think uh alex said three feet um the index cards are placed in front of the cup so um and i i guess there are maybe six inches between the index cards or i don't know um yeah so um Anyway, you know, it was a uh, interesting challenge. It was pretty quick and we saw different techniques kind of throwing on angles and whatnot, but um, Lex kind of rather quickly wins. Um, his last shot was a nice kind of bounce, like a bounce before going over the index card and then in. Mm -hmm. um, and was that on carpet? I think it was. I mean, that was kind of impressive. Um, so Lex wins. Now, Lex has been playing this under the radar, kind of in the middle, kind of, you know, really more polished the last couple rounds than we thought he would be um, kind of a game. And now our worry or my worry, at least, and we talk about this, is that he always, you know, or I guess the person who wins the challenge is at risk of playing too hard. What do you think about that? Do you, were you worried that Lex was going to do that? like too hard, too fast once having that confidence of like winning a challenge can like get you like kind of, we saw it in Ben a little bit, you know? Um, I thought that he could eventually play too hard, but I didn't think it would be directly caused by the immunity necessarily. Like, I think it would happen eventually. His own doing. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, you know, I don't think he needed it. And honestly, I wouldn't have won it if I was him. I think it puts you, it allows you some power and some safety to do a couple things, which I don't think he did. Um, which, you know, we'll just talk about it now. I, I keep, keep saying we'll talk about it later, but let's talk about it now. Whereas it's like if you're doing certain things on purpose and causing a little chaos and wanting to flush out advantages or idols by making it really uncertain who's going home, yeah, do that. Mm -hmm. This is the time to when you're safe. Mm -hmm. I don't think that was the case here. Mm -hmm. There was a little chaos. There was, I mean, what I call it chaos. I, I think it's more like, again, just being confident and comfortable with your positioning that allowed things to come out that shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and I think it actually was a detriment to Lex's game overall as opposed to really helping him win this. I don't think he was in trouble of going home. So, oh, so you, do you think if he didn't win immunity, that would have made him more nervous and then he wouldn't have played the same way? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, if you want to take advantage of that and really being like, this is now I want to control the narrative more, so be it. But again, because he did win and we didn't see that mm -hmm. successfully done, in my opinion, I, you should have just sat back and did nothing. Then make your move next time, I guess, or, or whatever. I mean, again, you could be stopping. Like, who is up for it? Low, Emily, Lydia, 
we do see his target was Lydia. So if you're trying to win to make sure that Lydia doesn't win, sure. But I think, you know, he had a couple options of who could have gone home. Um, anyway, moving on from that, uh, we do see Lydia talking about um, competing against the person that you're, who your teammate is. Uh, they didn't think it would be that. And um, you know, one interesting thing from this confessional is um, she was kind of talking about John, but she says that that was actually, or maybe this wasn't actually the conversation. There was well, in some. In this one, she oh, talks she about liking Lex. was her number one. Yeah, and she talks about liking Lex, um, which I thought is oh, okay. interesting. Oh yeah, I think let was it Lex that said that the whole John narrative was from Ben. Um, you know, I don't remember anything. I go by my notes and only my notes. I don't remember anything. Okay, so um, I think you'll have I think to talk there about was it. somebody that said that the whole oh Lex, but this is later in the episode. Lex says that the whole John vote was Ben's agenda. Um, maybe I'll get there. I'm not. This is Victoria Unleashed. We're skipping ahead. We're doing. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't have that written down. I misread my notes and I thought Lydia was the one that said that. <laughs> um, I have no idea. I'm not there yet. Um, no, I don't know. I, I don't even think I actually wrote that down. So that's a good point. That's a good. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I did think that I guess it's all out of order now, but I thought it was interesting how like now that ben's gone the john vote is also gone too like the idea of voting for john yeah and we also kind of saw that with when they went after lydia that first time and lydia protected uh themselves with an idol and then it was you know not really talked about mm -hmm. until this episode um but um i thought it was interesting because a couple things kind of like against lex in this episode and like, I was like, Lex is doing well. And then it kind of went downhill for me. But, you know, Lydia talks about liking Lex and wanting to like work with Lex. And, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, Lex is going to have to show his cards sooner or later. Um, but yeah, I think I think it could have been later. I don't think it needed to be now, especially because, you know, this is someone who who when you need to turn on your four and you you have to that is someone that you can use because they really like you so to be in a final eight have someone that really wants to work with you and like you you can kind of maybe manipulate your group to go after v take them out so that other person only has you that's best case scenario rather than like trying to get rid of someone who wants to work with you and likes you and would keep you around um Do you think I, lex realizes that lydia feels that way Maybe not. I mean, again, I was in a game where well, this wasn't the at the merge, but this was beforehand in Monte Carlo, where several people who I was happily voting out were very close to me, and I had no idea. But um, but that was again at the beginning of the game. But so it's 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 possible that Lex had no idea. Um, but I feel like you know. I think if you kind of think about it realistically, you know Lydia is going to be against, and with what Lydia is saying, Lydia is going to be against kind of the other three, mm -hmm. um, or at least the two, and John and Austin, if not Sarah as well, and probably sided with, you know, you're probably somewhere in the, the mix of like Lydia's top four, you know, at, at worst case scenario anyway. So, that's something you should find out um, with there only being eight people left, seven other people, kind of where you do stand with with some of those people. Um, but I just thought it was interesting. Um, then we have V talking about the, again, the struggle of the challenge um, and feels like, V feels like they're on the bottom. Um, a lot of that, this episode from V, like about the positioning, just not feeling good. Mm -hmm not really coming up with anything like any solutions here or talking about like plans on like gameplay of like how to fix that um i just don't think you have time in a game especially a mini where you can like i mean i know it's in confessional so you're expressing yourself but really have that time to really kind of just 
say that but not have so I need to do this or so I need to do that it's just like a this kind of it felt very defeatist it just felt like you were kind of like giving up a bit I don't know um so I wanted to see that kind of like but here's my plan you know and I was like I'm gonna be like yes go V like have like what are you gonna do like I want to know because that's the other thing too it's like we don't see that we know Lydia or has an idol and we don't see that being shared we don't see Lydia kind of coming up with like hey I have this I'll use it again you know wait for you if it's one of us or anything like that um I want to see more of that I want to see kind of people really playing the game rather than the numbers mm -hmm. um uh we see Lex talking about uh strategy um not wanting to stand out not wanting to show his cards um again interesting to put in here because you kind of did the whole episode so um yeah and then there was that big call with john v lo lex sarah and austin yeah and then they just really talked about like not much like lex just you know winning essentially mm -hmm. um and then Wasn't that the call where he was surprised that, like, he has power now? Oh, was that that call? Or was it something else? I mean, it was throughout the whole episode again. It was the, it was the, it came up a few times, but it was the, <laughs> clutch my pearls? <laughs> Me? Um, yeah, and again, it was like, we talked about last time, the overuse of that. Um, and people catching on and people being like, you do it all the time. And we see in this episode, locks, locks, who's locks? I'm going to call you locks now. Lex is getting clocked by Emily specifically later on. But, you know, it, it'll catch up. So you can't do that that much. You can't do the whole. <laughs> um, it's, it, it's, I mean, it's, gr I love watching it. Don't get me wrong. Like, I want you to do it 50 times an episode. But for your own gameplay, um, I don't know that it's in your best interest that that's your go-to. Um, but yeah, so anyway, so we see Austin talk about the bait and switch with the title, um, you know, with the challenge. And, uh, and that he feels vulnerable. Um, this is the beginning to a lot of Austin talking about zero gameplay and just kind of how he feels in this game um you know so more to come with that but uh Lo uh talks about uh she doesn't feel like uh she has a solid uh, bond with anyone but kind of indicated that she's kind of in with Emily which we know and Lex feels good about Lex as well um which again just you know it supports the whole lex is in this good spot with all these people with lydia with Lo, with his original tugala tugala is that their name yeah, yeah. Tugla. and um i was like am i making up that word <laughs> tugala and you know so it's like well, you don't have to win it's like who can, like you do not have to you could make some big plays at like final five four three and be like i was in such a great spot because that was my social game that you could probably go to the end with anyone cut someone good kind of nearing the end and really have a great chance at winning so i don't know um uh low also talked about having tech issues during round two remember low had some like foot issues before and then was having tech issues this time um <laughs> uh yeah i mean we didn't really i don't think we saw it or it you know, but maybe that's why she didn't win, but she was doing a good job during the challenge. Um, and then we see John V and Lowe on a call. Uh, Lowe kind of talking about being like a, kind of like a free agent um, and like willing to work with people. Mm -hmm. John says the same, re reiterates kind of like he's in the same position. Mm -hmm. um, and I wrote down that V admits to voting John because he kind of brings it up. I don't know who voted for me. And then V's like, it was, I voted for you and this is why. Um, a bit of that this game too. people really telling the truth with how they voted mm -hmm. and I mean is that something you would do if you were John or would you just like know that it was probably V and let it slide oh if I would I mean if I was V I would cop to it for sure but if I was John I wouldn't be asking for it I would 
have a safe assumption as to who that was. And if, you know, V had a good kind of, if it wasn't V and V had a good understanding of the game and whatnot, V she should would come up. Wa- She would want to go after him because, or- well, I would say if she did vote for me, like, or, or John, she would want to come and say like, by the way, I didn't vote for you. I know it might look like the optics are that I did, but I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, and because that wasn't happening, I think it's safe to assume that that is what happened. Yeah. And like, kind of, of course, like, I don't think anyone needs to say where the, the votes are. I don't think it hurts you to ask or it didn't with John, but at the same time, it's like, in it puts you in a position where um, if you ever wanted to work with V, I don't think those types of conversations actually help. It's like forget and move on rather than like bring it up and get over it. I think the forget and move on is better and almost pretend it didn't happen, um, in my opinion. Um, And then we see V talking about um, feeling demoralized because of uh, the Ben vote out and voting against John and that V's open to game moves um, because they only really have Lydia and so I mean that's great that this is being told to the confessional but this needs to be (laughs) reiterated to the right people in the game (laughs) so that you know (laughs) like so that people are aware of that right share that with the with with people um so that you're not next to go um and then we see Sarah and Austin talking uh not sure about who to vote for both are nervous austin says he might be the name um sarah says it might be john i mean we had a couple of these sarah and austin moments i just really i was just like what is happening why are you sitting there having this very casual like sipping some tea around a fire just having like a very relaxed conversation in a mini where like yeah, my name might be out there. I was just like, what is going on? Come up with a plan, make it happen. Let's do this. Like fight, 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 fight. I'm just like, so maybe I'm too much, but I'm, I mean, I am too much, but yeah, I'm, I agree. Right. But I'm just <laughs> like, but didn't you want to see that fight? Didn't you want to see them? Like, th- didn't they seem a little relaxed and just kind of like, hmm. yeah, I wanted to see the fight, but I, that's, Like, especially if they're admitting that, or especially if Austin's admitting he's nervous, then there's no reason to want to lay low and do nothing, I guess. Yeah, and especially we just came from that V confessional where it was like, I'm feeling feeling demoralized, I'm on the bottom. And then we go to Sarah and Austin who are just kind of sitting there and not doing much. And I think even Sarah says later on, like, you know, oh, I was hoping people, I think Austin got pulled for confessional and like oh and sarah's like that's the one person i was talking to Mm -hmm. you're welcome like talk to other people (laughs) like you can't just this this isn't a winning game to sit there and do nothing so i was like yeah i mean i'm glad they pulled austin so that you can kind of like do something Mm -hmm. um i wanted to see more and sarah does put names out here out there here there more than i see austin do but you know, there's that follow through that needs to happen. And there's that kind of drive and push. And I mean, not not the way that Lex was playing this episode, but just, you know, having some direction and, and some kind of, you know, mm-hmm. road that I can see you going along. Um, and in that conversation, it was brought up that low could potentially be like a win or threat. Yeah, they did talk about that at some point. And, um, and yeah, and then we go to, well, right after that, too, is the Austin um, confessional where he talks about uh, that Lowe might work with them, mm-hmm. speaking of Lowe, um, and that how they picked up Emily kind of during the swap. So, but again, these are like assumptions. These are, you know, nothing definitive. You don't see anything, or I didn't see anything that really kind of was them trying to you know it was kind of like assuming that since they voted together last time that emily and lo are with him this time but in that time he should probably go make sure yeah like build those on those connections if you think that there's something there like 
let's see it. Let's see you work them instead of sitting in a room with Sarah and not doing anything. Um, and then we see Sarah and Austin again talks about, uh, yeah, maybe this was it. There talks about where low going, where the tide goes, like, you know, seeing how maybe it's just like, do they have low? Don't they like, there's a bit of back and forth. Um, and like you said, then solidify that. And we just don't see that happen. Like there's no attempt for that, that we saw anyway. So after that, we see that low Austin, John and Sarah are in a room. Um, Sarah's asking if anyone has names. John says what V told him. Um, and this is where we see Sarah say a name. Sarah targets V, um, mm -hmm. which is what I was talking about. Like Sarah's not afraid of kind of putting names out there. We've seen it before and it hasn't gotten back to her, um, which is interesting because it easily can. Um, but, you know, that means that and I don't know if it's being done in a way that's being careful. Mm -hmm. um, but luckily, it hasn't gotten back to her in a negative way. But again, at least you're putting names out there. At least you're targeting people. I think uh, was this the point when we were watching where we were questioning why they were going after V instead of Lydia? Yeah, because it was like, what are you doing? Lydia has so much more of a story to win than V does. Lydia's saved herself with the idol. Um, you know, we've seen more of that gameplay happen. And like, I don't, I didn't understand personally why it was V. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you were worried about another idol, sure. But that was never brought up either. Mm -hmm. Clearly they weren't. Um, spoiler. Uh, and then Lex and Lydia, we see talking. Lex says he hasn't heard Lydia. Lydia says uh, Lex is in her end game. So now we went from, you know, feeling good about him. You were asking if if Lex was aware of that. Well, we have our answer. Lydia says, Lex, you know, is it you're in my end game? And then Lydia says, um, um, Emily is a threat, kind of brought that up. Um, so, oh, you know, wait, but you're not sure if Emily's a threat. No, I'm saying or that. I... <laughs> oh, I know what you're doing. This is where I already did my impersonation. Okay. <laughs> wait, em Emily's a threat. <laughs> um, yeah, that's where I was supposed to do my likes impersonation. Um, but, uh, <laughs> But <laughs> exact, but so I mean, so she's sharing a name with you. Lydia's sharing a name. Mm -hmm. Lydia is telling you that they're in their end game. You're in their end game. And so, I mean, yeah, that, she's bringing up a lot of names like John, Austin, and Emily, which she wouldn't do if there were no plans to work together. Exactly. And so then. I mean, do I think it's right for almost everyone but Lex to really be targeting Lydia? I do. But to Lex, I'm like He's the one uh, targeting her the most. <laughs> yeah, and that person's and that person's with you. And it's like I know I know it's like in the tier rankings we should probably talk about how Lydia is like sharing and like has a bad read on Lex because you know, Lydia's sharing with the one person who's like really the driving force of trying to get rid of of them. But and we'll talk about the tier rankings. But from Lex's perspective, I was just like. Yeah, I mean, if you should keep the one person that feels good about you, but like everyone else wants to target. Yeah, I would get rid of V then because you're getting rid of a number. You're getting rid of someone that if someone said that to me, I'd be like, OK, cool. Yeah, I know. Agree. Who do you feel close with? And whoever they said, I would go after because I would want to make sure that they were with me and not them. So if Lydia's oh, like, okay. oh, I feel great about low, I'd be like, I'm targeting low this round. If v, V's like, I'm you would, you would wait for her to say a name. That's I would ask. V. I would ask. You, no, already, I mean, you could, already know V. I would know V, but it could be V, but I would just want to get that confirmation. Like, I'd be like, oh, who do you feel good with? Like then, like, absolutely. I want to work with you too. And I do think Emily's a threat. You know, that original Tugla is a threat. Like I get it you know, forget that I'm part of that. Um, we've seen that happen before. Where people forget that you're part of Serpone. Um, anyway, so then, um, you mean but, that dead shot? <laughs> but, uh, so it's, you know, it's, 
it's so interesting. It's just so interesting to me because I just would not. As soon as I see this happening, I'm like, oh, Lex is like the first half is playing such this great game. I don't know why I would have won this. And then these conversations, I'm like, ooh, ooh, what's happening? Oh, no, goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I mean, Lydia has to go. Lydia's going to win this game. Uh, I know that. And I know Lex knows that. But like, get rid of the people who around Lydia for now. Keep that shield in front of you. Keep that opposition so that the rest of Tugla has someone. And you're at eight. You can target people at, you know, do I think Lydia's going to win out seven, six, five, four? Like that, you know, that's like four individual immunities. No. So you have probably a couple chances to get rid of Lydia again, potentially. Um, it, again, if you're worried about an idol, that's a different story. But again, that's never brought up. So yeah, I don't no one is her. like, oh, we should go after Lydia, but we're afraid of an idol. Yeah. So it's, you know, I get why everyone wants to go after Lydia. I would be on that boat. But for Lex, like I said, doesn't make sense to me. Anyway, uh, we see Emily she says that she wants to start um, winning things and challenges and whatnot um, and thinks that she's not a threat due to poor challenge performance. Mm -hmm. um, I almost don't even I don't even know if I can pinpoint it to that. I think Emily is just doing a really good job with um, her positioning in the game and how she talks to people and, you know, um, has kind of cleaned it up a bit as well and recently. And so, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even say it's poor challenge performances. I just think it's, I would attribute it to the positives that you're doing is to why, you know, um, you're not a threat to other people right now, because I would be most worried about Lydia and Emily in the game. Personally, I would think in the end, everyone would assume that the Tugla tribe had it easy because they had the numbers and we don't see much of a fight from Austin or Sarah, you know, so I would be afraid of like probably in this order, um, Lydia, Emily, or maybe vice versa. I think, vi well, vice versa for me, I think if Emily was there, it would be purely social related. Yeah. And then John. Um, so that would kind of be my, uh, you know, my hit list. Um, but uh, yeah, and as long as one of them was going this round, I'd be okay with that. Um, and then I think everyone else I could, if I was, you know, Emily, or if I was one of those people, I, I think I could beat everyone else in, in the end. So <laughs> it's interesting. It's very interesting. Um, then we see Lex and Lydia talking about things. Uh, Lex is telling Lydia that Emily's played orgs, um, that she's one to watch. Again, I don't know why you're sharing specific information that could get back to Emily when it's someone that you're now targeting, like you're targeting Lydia. So why are you sharing this information with Lydia? Mm -hmm. I didn't understand that gameplay there. Um, yeah, because if you target Lydia and she goes home, then planting the seed about emily doesn't really matter anymore it doesn't matter but also if she if lydia if she, speaks yeah. to emily then you know like it's one thing to be like yeah i think they're a threat you know say more generic kind of things but mm -hmm. to like specifically be like they've played games i know it blah, blah you know i'm just like i don't understand that i like why are you doing that to lydia because you're trying to target lydia like are you trying to like i don't think you need to win over lydia and lydia's told you that they're in their final too so it's like you can just kind of go along with that um then we have uh, um austin and sarah in a room and they're talking about how lex might pop into the room later oh yeah and even before that i just want to finish off with lex and lydia also talked about john and austin are tight um and lex is uh mentioning that duos are scary which is also an interesting point that I just wanted to have out there too, because he is talking to a perceived duo as well mm -hmm. um, and bringing that point up. So I was like, more of like, I don't really understand that, what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, and then Gemily, Gemily, Emily joins the call um, and they come up with Austin. So that's where the, they come up with the name of Austin. Um, Emily doesn't say a word, but it's just kind of, they, they 
they talk about Austin as a name there. Um, then yeah, we said, you, what did you say? Austin and Sarah were in a call. And then they were just kind of doing the same situation as before. And they were like, oh, maybe Lex will come into this room. Um, yeah. Seeing that we're in here. Well, they were talking about the demise of the, like, guys, stop manifesting this. Like the demise of the four Tugla yeah. and how that it can't possibly last. Which is you know? interesting because this is final eight where theoretically a, a solid group of four can just bring I'm in a fifth. Right. Yeah. Like, I'm like, why are you manifesting that, guys? Like, don't speak that. Don't speak that out there. Don't speak that. Um, v, uh, what did I write here? Uh, the, oh, they bring up the names V or Lydia as being the target, but Sarah likes Lydia and doesn't necessarily want to do Lydia. Um, and I just wrote that they're just like chilling. Mm -hmm. They're, you know what? They're doing what the challenge says. They're just uh, rolling with their homies. Like they're just like they took that took that too literally, and they're just like rolling with the homies the whole game. They're just not. They're just chilling out in this room together. Um, and Austin talks about just yeah being happy to be there, mm -hmm. and I was like. Austin, play the game, please. I mean, like, I need to see more from you than just being happy to have made it this far. I'm like, you're in the middle of this mini. Like, how many hours? You must be exhausted, but how many hours have gone by? Like, fight, like, do this. You think you're on the bottom. You're in a good spot with within the four. So, like, figure stuff out. Like, I, I just want to see that kind of fight, and I just want to see some plans being made or something, something, mm -hmm. you know? Okay. No, we're just we're just hanging out, chilling. Okay. Um, how long? Do you know how long these rounds are? Like roughly, like how much time they give them? I have no idea. Like, is it twenty minutes? Is it like how much time do they have to scramble? I or think it guess? differs per round. Um, I didn't. I've never played in a DCP mini, but I've played in a basically DCP mini before, and. I didn't keep track of the time, but probably like 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes to get all of the confessionals in. Right. Yeah. I assumed about like a 20, a 20 ish, yeah. 30 if needed, but 20 perhaps. Um, and it, it usually, like, I feel like it's pretty rushed, but I think it's enough time to get a plan going and like turn things around if it's going poorly at the beginning yeah because in our monte carlo we had half an hour during our mini round right mm -hmm. yeah and that was a lot of time um we see lex and emily talk about lydia and v mm -hmm. with the emphasis on lydia yes um and lex clocks uh that lydia is making moves and um you know, Lex really kind of builds, and I thought this was really well. Done. So Lex did some amazing things this round, and then some like huge mistakes in my opinion. But like Lex did a really interesting, and I don't know even know if we're there yet, but I'll just talk about it now. But Lex did this really great thing with when he was talking to people and mentioning Lydia Envy. He would like do just that, like very subtly, kind of like emphasize Lydia in different ways. And really like at the forefront, like, yes, you know, the duos like Lydia and V, you know, because Lydia is the one who, you know, just even like just an extra saying that again, like Lydia's name, or just saying that like kind of Lydia is the more of the mastermind behind the that duo. Mm -hmm. um, and that's important to do. And I thought that's a great job. Like, you know, I, again, if I was Lex, I wouldn't be going for Lydia this round. But I do think that like, as a target and how to paint a picture on your target, kind of really subtly kind of saying those things mm -hmm. um, is a great way to go about it. Um, okay, then where are we? Uh, Lo and Lydia are in a room together. Um, Lydia says, uh, Austin mm -hmm. to Lo. Uh, v joins the call. Lo says V's name was out there, but took V's name off the board. Um, oh yeah, this was in, round. in was reference to last round, yeah. yeah just kind of because they were talking about like you know where they voted like did you vote with us or whatever so mm -hmm. again i'm not a huge fan with like rehashing the past in mm -hmm. a long game in a mini you know okay. forget it move on um but secretly remember it oh of course remember everything 
but just like <laughs> weird to like oh you know oh we're, by the way did you but, vote for, but like, yeah i guess to clarify with the person it just makes them feel uncomfortable with you yeah and it and it makes them either lie to you or just that puts them in an uncomfortable spot that they have to talk about this which is not like a bonding moment so like forget it like it didn't happen it's done what's the point of rehashing the past and and just trying to like what are you getting out of that like nothing nothing mm -hmm. so um anyway they want to get to lex and emily to tell them to like make sure that they're voting austin um and uh they also talk about a fake name to put out there as well um then we see Lex, Emily, and Sarah talk. Uh, Lex brings up that he's seeing some duos, talks about the duos again, um, and that Lydia had brought up John and Austin. Um, but like, yeah, this is, this is and this is where you kind of do that, where you kind of say other people said, which is what I've been saying this whole game, like that's how many should be done is you never kind of bring up names yourself just say other people are saying stuff like well i heard or you know this person said this uh, so has anyone ever followed up saying who was that person what do you mean like when you like when you play games and you keep saying other people oh when i do it oh yeah like i mean they generally don't ask you but if they do you're like Listen, I don't want to put their game on blast. I don't want to like call anyone out. So I'm not going to say names, okay. but in my last room, this is what I heard. Or, okay. you know, this is what. But is it, is it kind saying. of a tactic like playing dumb where it'll eventually be discovered if that's the way you always. I've play. never seen it being like someone pointing out that because it is often the truth. So if you use it interchangeably with it, whether it's true or not, whether it was you said it or them, it never, I never see it get back to someone that I only, like I've, I've talked about my mini history a little bit and I've, I've, uh, how many games, I've, I think I've played four minis ish. I played some like mini games within games, um, uh, that have also won, but I've won, I think I've only lost one. Um, so I use that tactic all the time and I mean, it always works for me. Um, so, I mean, I just feel like it's such a good way of getting out of things, um, rather but, than- Would you make sure the thing that you're saying other people are saying, would you have made sure there was at least like a 70% sure chance someone was actually saying that stuff? Oh, I mean, that's varies per situation. So you just have to like figure it out as you move along, but just in general, like as a tactic, that is something you can easily kind of intertwine with your strategy. It's just how you talk in a mini, whether it's survivor, whether it's, you know, a different type of mini, that's just, that's just my love language in a mini to, to other people. That's how I'm going to talk to you and get you to do my bidding for me. So, oh, so, so people should be worried if you start. I'm talking never, if you, if you, like yeah, if you watch this, I'm never playing a mini with you. Um, <laughs> but, um, I, w I would be scared to do that. Yeah, I'm retired. Um, so Lydia, wow. yeah, blah, blah, blah. okay. What else are we talking about in this grouping? Um, yeah, John and Austin is what they're told, but he knows that it's uh, also V and Lydia. He's talking up Lydia as a threat. Um, we see Emily um, says, which pair should we split up first though? And Sarah says V and Lydia. Mm -hmm. Um so you know again we do see sarah if sarah's watching i'm not saying you didn't do anything you did bring people's name up a few times um i just want to see more follow through with that like more than just saying name like mm -hmm. when presented with that um yeah and then uh we see sarah in a confessional feels like she's on the bottom of the four mm -hmm. again i don't see it that way i think this is other people's narrative kind of getting in her head um so uh yeah it was interesting to see that she feels that way um but even if it's other people other people's narrative getting to into her head shouldn't she treat it as the truth because that's the way people will see it i mean perception is everything but like if you only need to make sure that john austin and i don't think they do view it as such and Lex see it that way. If they see it that way, then, you know, clock it, good to know, whatever. 
but if other people see it that way and you know like to me i'm like it's austin and and sarah are you know it right and so um yeah i'm i'm i don't know that that's anyone's truth who's actually in that grouping um so i don't think it's accurate at all if it was then yeah it's good to i mean again it's if everyone thinks it then it would become the truth but i don't think everyone thinks it um and then we see lex emily low and john in a room uh i quoted lex here john just so you know lydia is coming for you um again really double tripling down on this lydia thing like i don't know that you need to put the you know the cherry on top and the sprinkles and stick a spoon in it and hand feed them like i don't know if you need to do all that like i, I get it i get it lax like i get it um so interesting but okay we see it again i mean i i like that tactic though alone in itself like the whole like by the way i'm looking out for you like this person saying your name i do that as well so i mean i'm not mad at that how do you feel at this point with 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 that and what Lex is doing here. Mm. We haven't gotten to the good part of this. Yeah, I feel like that was pretty good because it could build the trust with John a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So that part, I didn't have too much of a problem with. And then we get into <laughs> that Lydia, I think it was actually V and then Lydia join, um, but almost simultaneously. And Lex does a really good job with pivoting um but too good and in too much of a like too big of a room with too many people mm -hmm. um because it turns the whole like i'm looking out for you john to being yeah the duos things coming up i'm sorry john you know and, and then emily realizes what the situation is yeah so like john was kind of playing along with it because he like knew what he was doing um uh, and Lex just reiterates that it's about a duo, but we do see Emily um, right immediately afterwards in a room with Sarah and, oh, I wrote Sarah down twice. Was Sarah in the room with Emily alone or was there a third person in that room? Sarah, Emily, and John. And this is the first time where we see Emily bring up Lex as like, I think, yeah, Sarah, Emily, and John, and she brings up Lex as someone who can play yeah. both sides and then fully, we get her confessional fully clocking lex is lying so well yeah i just wrote sarah emily and sarah were in a room and i know that can't be right unless she cloned mm -hmm. herself um and then yeah you're right in the confessional lex is lex is a snake um and then goes very in this very descriptive emily has such a magical way of talking like as a viewer it's I mean, we live for it, right? And we're so lucky that Emily's still in the game as well so that we can see this. Because she talks about like having like ruby red eyes or something, like a very descriptive kind of <laughs> imagery of what this snake looks like. Um, you know, I'm here for it. I love to see it and hear it. So I was like, it's so funny as well. But yeah, now we've seen what Lex has done in this episode in this short period of time it is already coming back to you because of how you're playing we you lied so well in that large grouping i mean it's one thing you were mid talking when they came in i get it mm -hmm. you need to finish that sentence without it being awkward and i think you could have done that without then taking another breath and going into full, a full other sentence and again double and tripling down on kind of the opposite and so i just didn't think it was necessary i know you were talking about it earlier you didn't think it was necessary either mm -hmm. um him explaining it that long am i correct like you were saying yeah, that because you have john in the call then you have um lex or lydia and v in there and if you're talking duos like everyone's in the same room yeah and just people are seeing how you're lying about it though and it's like you didn't need to do it that much you can kind of end it with being like yeah so yeah you know it's the, the duo thing is what i'm hearing john yeah and just leave it more neutral um i wouldn't even do the whole i'm sorry john thing i would just have done like that's what i'm hearing and then hopefully other people talk mm -hmm. and if they don't then you know 
you were kind of out of luck because it was you were the last one speaking. So I would maybe then, if I was Lex, I would have run into a room with uh, with Lydia and V and being like, by the way, they were just all bringing up that the duos talk, and I was saying that I did hear it and kind of explain myself. So it didn't like look as shady as as it could have been, right? Mm -hmm. It was laying it on thick, Lex. Um, then we see Lex, Emily, and Lo in a room. Uh, Lo says, um, you two I heard are on both sides, uh, which is interesting because I think there's some slight panic and there's the, you know, again. Um, and Emily- and This whole conversation was interesting because from the way I initially heard it, it sounded like Lo was accusing Lex and Emily of playing both sides. And Lex jumps right into it, having Lo has another sentence that I haven't said yet, but Lex jumps right into it with that defensive. But if you freeze frame it, you see Lex being, and you see Emily being like, like laughing at it. And I just love that juxtaposition of the two different tactics like that they both are taking in the game. Like Emily's just having this fun with it, being like, ha. and then Le Lex is just playing that kind of like, what? How dare? And, but like, that's not what Lo meant. Like Lo's next sentence is like, so are the three of us in the middle then? Like it was, oh, okay. it was just but how I think, she I think was structuring before, it. Before she said that, like, Lex, Lex clarifies that the whole situation with Lydia, which was like a rebuttal to the potential accusation that he was playing both sides. So I yeah. don't think he should have inserted that in. Definitely not that quickly because like he, he was kind of saying it as Lo was saying her sentence as well, but I did hear Lo say, so are is the three of us in the middle and Lex was just all over it. And it just felt very defensive. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I think if you're like accused of something, you'd take a second and be like, well, where's, the, no, I mean, maybe that's coming from like this being said or something, but like, what? Who said that to you? Like, as opposed to, no, this is, you know, cause it just seems so defensive. Because then but you're kind of showing that you're guilty because you, you want to defend yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so again, like, that I think it's that confidence of winning, Lex, that is kind of getting to you this round. So I hope you ease up on that a little bit because I want to see you at the end. Um, anyway, so then very interesting conversation that was. And then we jump into John, Lydia, and Emily. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where John asks Lydia if she voted for John. They say yes. Emily leaves is what I wrote. Um, and then they're talking about the Ben vote a little bit more. I, I, again, I will never fully understand why people talk about a previous vote. It, it doesn't matter. It does, nothing comes out of it. Um, 9.9 .9 times out of 10, I feel like. Um, and it just uh, gives you that, an uncomfortable topic. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I know you don't want to necessarily like, what's the name? What's the name? What's the name? Maybe you should be talking like that, but at the very least talk about something else then. Um, then we see John talking about uh, in a confessional that um, something we've been talking about that there's five girls to three guys and and that there's no girls have left as far as he's aware, um, which is true, and that he wants to make sure that it's time for a girl to go. I mean, one of the guys is safe, and then the only other two guys is him and Austin. So I understand why he wants a girl to go because otherwise it's fifty fifty if it's him or not. Um, and kind of talks about it. he doesn't necessarily think that it's like a girl's alliance or anything like that, but just like, you know, kind of wants to even the, the ground a little bit more. Um, and also talks about how if he was like watching the game, it would be different and would love this, um, which we've talked about as well, too. Um, and then ne next is Lex and Lo. Uh, Lex um, says he's voting Lydia. Uh, his final two is low. Final four is Emily and John. Now, do you believe that that's Lex's true intentions? Not really. 
I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, I could believe that it's true. Um, I could also believe it's made up, but yeah, like he hasn't really said that to many people or anything like that. So I, Mm -hmm. you know, and when I haven't really seen him promise that yet, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm just curious why John is one of the two girls that's that's included in that final four when he also has a good relationship with Austin and Sarah who seem to be smaller threats. Yeah. I think it's a terrible final four for him. Um, it's like the like, hardest final four. Yeah. Like way to like, you know, build that wall that you need to climb over to win. Like, it's like, I'm like, let's name all the people who I definitely think could win against me and put them at the, like, you might as well just include Lydia in that as well. Like, it's like, <laughs> It's like the hardest, like, those are like real contenders for Emily, John, Lowe, like, <laughs> why? Like, I, I didn't understand it. So I, I hope it's not true, but like, okay. All right, Lex, you don't want to take the easy road. I get it. All right. So strange. So Lex, DM us if you, or comments down below why, if, if you're watching this and if that is was your true intention at the time and it and and why <laughs> um or just let me know you don't have to put it in public you can just dm me a lot of people by the way there's comments and then a lot of people kind of get get to us behind the scenes as well and like message us little things so um we're all for that fill us in um and uh and then we move on to austin and v austin says he's worried yet again uh and there's still no plan to come up. There's no, mm-hmm. there's no plan. There's just, um, these are two very passive people this round, Austin and V. So am I surprised nothing came up in the, those two talking? And they're also opposing, you know, duos potentially. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I, not that I was expecting anything, but, um, yeah, it was an interesting little inclusion in in this episode. Just to have those two kind of talk, because I don't think that there is, you know, if they both were to survive this vote, I don't see them working together at all. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, anything before we go to tribal that you wanted to mention that I've left out before we jump into it? Mm, not really. Okay. Tribal. You know, I don't talk about tribal. You can watch it yourself. Um, but I did, I do want to talk about tribal just a little bit because I think there's such a blunder that happens here that I have to talk about it, that we have to talk about it. And it's the one and only Lex who needs to keep his mouth shut. <laughs> um, Lex, uh, fessing up about the duo talk and like, why I'm like, as it's happening, I'm like, you are going to spook someone into playing an idol again if that is your intention of advantages or idols being played while you are safe kudos good job fully valid don't think for a second that was what your reasoning was for doing that Mm -hmm. i just it's like word vomit like it was it was painful to watch i don't know why he was doing this Mm -hmm. do you have an explanation or like what were you thinking probably yeah probably just feeling too comfortable and then like not really yeah (laughs) probably just feeling too comfortable and not careful enough yeah (laughs) like i again i never talk about tribal guys i never talk about tribal i'm like who cares it's like you watch yourself people are often like bsing and just saying stuff to answer the questions so I never talk about it, but this is such a blunder, such a blunder. Like, let me tell you, can't wait to get to our tier rankings today. I don't know where we're going to put anybody, but I can't wait. And I'm going to force you to speak first if they're going in the lower category. Because um, Victoria doesn't like tra- trashing anyone and I, I'll trash myself. I'll trash other people. <laughs> I mean, I mean I'll trash myself. It's just hard to trash other people. I know it's just a game. And it's like, we're talking round by round and people make like wonderful moves and people make like huge blunders and we all do it. So it's like fun to talk about. Um, and I think for, for the players, it's like really reviewing kind of what you've done and what you haven't and keeping that in, you know, 
the back of your head, mind when you play other games is super important. Um, you know, I'm not saying what we're taking as like, or what we're saying is gold. I'm just saying it's our perspectives and it is something to keep in mind and assess when you kind of, you know, change your game or are you thinking about what, how your game will be in another, another org of some sort. So, um, but I love talking about it and this is what it's for. We're the VL. We talk about the, you know, from our viewers perspective, cause we don't know what's going to happen in our thoughts. Um, cause if you go on the real survivor, you will have people who are obsessed with you and love you and will throw themselves in front of a car for you. And then you'll have other people who are trashing you and everything that you stand for. So we're not that bad, <laughs> but you know, just to give you a little taste of it. Um, anyway, so the voting, let's get to the voting. So we see that V votes for Austin, Austin votes for V, Lydia votes for Austin. Lex votes for Lydia, Sarah votes for Lydia. And I think we like knew this was coming. Mm -hmm. This just seemed with Lex kind of, to me, putting the nail in the, the idle coffin kind of a thing, like we're letting it loose. It's um, Lydia plays an idol. Mm -hmm. And for the second time, successfully plays an Like if they do not go after Lydia next, and every time until they get Lydia, Lydia's gonna win the game and rightfully so. And I kind of like hope she does kind of right now. So um, yeah, Lydia, like to not only once know, and like not even back to back, like, oh, I know I'm the next name, like successfully playing an idol rounds apart when you know it's just you. So really good and we've seen that from Lydia like a really good kind of read of what's going to happen and figuring it all out even if Lydia is not voting with the the majority Lydia kind of knows probably what's happening or at the very least when it could be them and time to play an idol so uh Lydia plays that idol and we see the rest of the votes Emily voted for Lydia John voted for Lydia Lo voted for Lydia um I do think Lydia was the right vote I just think if it was the round was done intentionally and, and I guess they're probably like what's the chances that Lydia has a second idol but like if it was done well you gave Lydia three three or four rounds to get another one so I mean like you know you should have just done the next round is, is what you should have done I just don't think it's wonderful gameplay on everyone's part because it should have been talked about like the it's going to be Lydia then we have to make Lydia really think it's someone else and and I don't think anyone successfully did that. Um, it was kind of talked a little bit about, but I don't think it was successful, even remotely successful, especially with. Yeah, I didn't see very much effort to convince Lydia of a plan, which even if you don't think she has an idol, it's always a good idea to make that person feel comfortable because if they don't have an idol and they're not comfortable, then they can do whatever it takes to stay alive. So I think it was poor gameplay to not even make her feel like 50% comfortable. Yeah, super poor gameplay. And I don't, it's so interesting because people are sitting back in this round a little bit. And I think we see that, you know, those kind of, that kind of gameplay kind of come back and bite them in the butt. And, mm -hmm. you know, and people who are playing and doing other things, didn't really manage that well and part of it is managing that and who's going home and making sure that they aren't playing idols that is also part of the game so uh you know minus points for me for those people i just don't think they did a good job of it and austin who only got two votes ends up going home and i mean austin at the end of the day what did you do this round other than say that you thought you were at the bottom and grateful for being there? Not a whole lot. Um, so, I mean, I, and we'll, let's, you want to jump into the rankings? Yeah, let's just do that. <laughs> okay. So I was going to fully ready to put Austin, um, here, let me, let me pull it up here so you can see what I'm talking about. I was fully ready to, to put Austin in the, um, maybe this time you'll find a real idol um, for the lack of strategy, gameplay, anything this round. Mm -hmm. um, but you went home, so. 
eight tribe guys in a spoken. row. The tribe has spoken. <laughs> eight guys in a row. Like the girls are doing such a phenomenal job, whether it's intentionally or not. But again, I'm pointing it out because we don't often see that in a game, and I could, I do live for that. I'm like, I love it. Um, you know, I like Lex. I like John. Um, a part, you know, I want to see them both at the end, but then there's a part of me that just wants it to be a, like a final five all girls, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the closer you get to that, the more of a narrative that can be for them to come up with. So mm -hmm. they need to be careful, which is why John wanted to make sure that a girl went and that didn't happen. So let's talk about John. John wanted to make sure a girl went, voted incorrectly. Um, no, he, he voted correctly. I mean, te like at least voted in the majority. Well, in the majority, but incorrectly in like the, sure, the, mm -hmm. the, the idol was used and you, maybe I'm not, okay, I'll take that back. Not voting incorrectly, but your intended person did not go home is what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so you did, you don't get your way. Um, and, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think played a bad game uh, this round. I don't think that he did anything that really takes him down all that much. But uh, it's kind of worth playing for for me. I don't, I don't know that John did anything to, you know, to me, no one managed Lydia and V well. And um, so I don't want to put him in Queen stays Queen. What are your thoughts? Oh, now I have to provide a rebuttal. <laughs> you want to keep him in Queen Says Queen? Um, I just thought that after last episode, with the with how much his name was coming up, um, that it would still be coming up this round, but it somehow didn't come out, come up at all, and then, I think him not doing as much this round allowed other people to become bigger targets for next round such as Lex and Lo. And so yeah. I think like this round makes me more makes it seem more encouraging that he would last longer but maybe he didn't do as much. I mean, we can leave him in there for now and change it later if needed. I wouldn't put you there, John, just letting you know. Um and do you think here's a question for you that I just thought of do you think the having the challenge with the duos really sparked that duo talk for the remainder of the episode? Like just having a duo challenge, do you think that that had anything to do with the fact that it was really duo focused or was a coincidence? I think it had something to do with it because they were talking about a trio last time and then all of a sudden it's a duo and sometimes people are subconsciously anchored to some word they hear. Yeah, food for thought, I guess. Um, okay, so um, let's talk about, let's talk about Lex. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you can make an argument to put Lex in many different categories. Um, for me, I think Lex, I was going to say some things that shouldn't be put on YouTube. So I'm just going to, I think, uh, I think he did like so much potential, especially at the beginning of this episode. And it went so, it plummeted so hard, so fast that for me, Lexington, you get the, maybe this time you'll find a real idol. Mm-hmm. I agree because I think by the end of it, he kind of lost someone who wanted to work with him as a final two and then revealed how he was playing both sides to the whole tribe. And I think he will be in trouble next round. Yeah, well, now you have Lydia is going to feel the most betrayed by you, probably. Um, and Lydia will probably want to come after you. And now you'll have that support from probably Emily, who is clocked mm -hmm. you as being a snake with ruby eyes. And, you know, it's maybe you have Sarah and John's protection, but here's the thing you lost one of your four. So now you have Lydia and V on one side. Maybe you have Sarah and John. Well, that's three against two, but Emily will probably be happily get rid of you. 
and low, it could be a swing vote. So who knows? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's you really kind of crap the bed on this one, Lex. Um, so sorry. Yeah, maybe this time you'll find a real idol. I, you might need one next round. Um, and then, uh, okay, let's talk about Sarah. I think she stays in the same place. Yeah, I mean, I would have put Austin and maybe this time you'll find a real idol and Sarah just above that because Sarah did say a names a few times and just seems to like, you know, and doesn't have her name out there and seems to just be in a, a better position than Austin. Clearly, Austin was the target and went home or the target from the other two. So, um, and you do have to say something by not like, taking people off too much, but you're really not doing a whole lot. So staying afloat for me as well. Um, v. Kind of, spot, yeah, kind of the same thing. Didn't really do anything this episode. Um, didn't make horrible mistakes by any means. Knows their position in the game. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Staying afloat. For um Lydia second time successfully playing an idol I don't know that we've given Lydia the distinction of queen stays queen we and I haven't and I feel like that's such a disservice if we don't do that this round mm -hmm. because you successfully gotten someone else out two times with that idol play and I don't mean I don't necessarily think you're in a great position but I don't think you're in a dire position either. Although people should be going after you. I don't know. I think people can be swayed to maybe make a move against a uh, Lex or, or something else. So I, I think you're super dangerous and people should realize that and people should come after you. But I would put Lydia in Queen stays queen, even if it's just what we've seen so far and including this episode with gameplay and surviving. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? Mm -hmm. You don't seem convinced. Wait, no, I am convinced. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, and then what about what about low? What are your thoughts? I feel like either this category or the top of staying afloat. I'm okay with low being and worth playing for yeah i feel like um you know was found herself in on the right side of the vote that incorrect that didn't get their target out but still you know um how is how we're saying it but um yeah i mean like is in good with everyone it seems like like i don't know that there's many people who are like you know, we hear Lowe's nail rumblings, but there's only there's now seven people left. So you're going to hear it. But um, I don't it like it dissipates real quick whenever Lowe's name gets brought up. So I don't think there's my and it's just everyone has that potential, like so many people want to work with Lowe as well. And I think Lowe's like such a potential swing vote, especially mm -hmm. this next round that I don't think Lowe has anything to worry about. Mm hmm in my opinion. I mean, anything could happen. Yeah, I don't think she'll go home next round. So I think this is the right uh, category. Okay. Um, Emily is the only person we haven't talked about yet. I feel like Emily could stay in the same category. Yeah, I think doing a really good job clocking Lex, you like know. Being the first one to realize it. Exactly um playing smart again many people want to work with emily but i do think like whereas emily's playing like a bigger game which can be in my opinion rewarded more um so in i was watching john's recap with i think garrett was talking about it as well and they were talking about how i think garrett brought up how how emily you know, might be taking some people off in the jury with that type of gameplay. Um, I disagree. I think that in a mini, that kind of gameplay is rewarded. 
those kind of bigger moves and things like that. So um, I think Emily being a, being, being a bigger personality um, and, you know, in such a good position right now too, uh, again, not targeted and, and not being the threat, like Emily has said, like, you know, I think puts her in a really good spot. So I am comfortable with Emily staying in Queen stays Queen. Yeah. Yeah. So we still have to end the debate on where John goes. Well, let's rank people. You like ranking them in their order. So Queen stays Queen. Let's just say John's staying there for now. I think but... it would be Emily, Lydia, then we'll figure out where John goes. Oh my God, I have to do this. Okay. Um, okay. And then I think everyone else is in order. Um, uh, I agree. I agree. I think Sarah before V because Sarah is still in a decent spot where, um, you know, can potentially still team up with Lex and John and, mm -hmm. and, um, I think John's more of a, although the often when the, one of the duos is split up, the, the surviving member is often in a much better position, but I still think see as people can potentially view john as a threat um but yeah i mean i wouldn't be targeting sarah at all um and i do think that if people are still on the v lydia train they might just be like lee you know Vid lee lydia might have a third idol who knows let's just go after v finally you know so mm -hmm. i can see that happening maybe i don't know um yeah, so I'm okay with that. I'm fine. We'll leave John there. <laughs> no, um, but you don't sound happy about that. Uh, no, I mean, I'm fine with it. I think he is, I would just put him in like worth playing for only because, you know, he was part of that duo that was targeted, survived it. His name was never out there. And I think he is playing a really good game. I'm fine with him being in Queen's Day's Queen, to be honest with you. I'm fine. Or I think the fact that his name didn't show up this time like by default he didn't have to do as much but i think it was as a result of something good which was his name wasn't coming up yeah yeah exactly um yeah i think i'm okay with that so in queen stays queen in order we have emily lydia john i don't think like four weeks ago or i mean four episodes ago i would have ever guessed that but um those three <laughs> um worth playing for low staying afloat is sarah and v and maybe this time you'll feel or find a real idol is lexington mm -hmm. and of course we said goodbye to austin who had a lot of potential um in the beginning of like first quarter of this game and i just feel like really needed to like you know in a long game could have done much better i think but and it, you know you're in a good spot like you didn't go out early but you, you kind of middle ground but um in a mini you have to make those moves much quicker bolder um austin said it was his first org and i'm very glad that he's happy with his placement um i think he should be proud of that and i hope that that does encourage him to play more and and you know and i would love to see a messy austin like <laughs> I want to see what that looks like in a game you know? um, or playing too hard, too fast, Austin. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we'll potentially see Austin in more DCP stuff at some point. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen here. And that brings us to the end. Um, you know, I was teased with a little uh, uh, kind of few words from production that this was a, a fun good episode so and I was like oh how is this going to play out and yeah I mean the Lex of it all really <laughs> like <laughs> like it, there was many people who, who made it really interesting but gosh I was I was I was it was kind of the gameplay that I was anticipating Lex doing like five rounds ago but then he like really kind of got it together and then it came out again <laughs> It exploded. It exploded. It was like, you know, under pressure and just needed to come out. So that win was just was just there. Um, I cannot wait for the next episode. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I think it can go 
I think three different ways really in my head. And, um, I have, and I, and I do think it completely depends on who wins individual immunity. Mm -hmm. So that can change the game next round as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. Uh, any last words on any, any last thoughts of anything? Well, I just started playing another game and I now sympathize with all of the players who might be watching this because it's scary having Jonathan in the viewers lounge. <laughs> I'm a scary, intimidating person, um, but not enough that anyone voted me out. So anyway, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, I'm I'm critical, but in a fun way to you know, whatever, to keep it fun and light. And uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, who doesn't like people watching them play and like having like a fan and like- I mean, most people game. aren't that critical. Okay, this is, my, this is my job. I will, I, let me just say something about the viewers lounge. Uh, Victoria's idea, not mine. Um, <laughs> I'm only here to help. Um, so this isn't my thing. As, as people may think this is a duo, we're a duo. Um, <laughs> This is very much Victoria's and I'm just a little helper. So um, I just have a mouth and I'm half Portuguese and I speak my mind. So, um, but I hope you all enjoy it and what we have to say and keep commenting, following us. Don't subscribe because I don't want to do a wall set and um, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.